Hi. Um, I guess good evening from New York. Um, we are shop architects. I am Mingyi Fan, the director of visualization here at Shop Architects. And I'm Jeffrey Bell. I'm a senior associate with the digital design and delivery group here. And so we want to talk a little bit about what we do, who we are, and what's next at Shop. And before that, we really do want to thank Chaos Group for giving us the opportunity to present all our work with you today. And so just a little bit about Shop before we go forward. Um, we are a New York-based full-service architectural firm. Um, and that includes not only all our architectural designers and all of that support staff, but also an in-house uh, technology and visualization team. And so that is us. And our work spans the globe. We are based in New York, so a large number of the projects are here locally in New York with us, including the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, along with these two towers that are under development right now in New York. And we work with developers, we work with tech companies, and we work with institutions. Um, but it's not just limited to that. Um, in addition to being diverse in location of our work, we are also diverse in scale and program. And so in addition to these arenas, these master plans, and these skyscrapers, we also routinely take on smaller scale projects as well that explore experimental material use um, and study the impact of smaller in interventions such as this phone booth project on local communities. And this is really made all possible by the different design teams and the different in-house teams as previously mentioned, like our fabrication team that makes both small models and large-scale mock-ups, to the various branches of our technology group, allowing us to connect the digital realm to the physical world through on-site augmented reality and assisted, assisted fabrication. And we've really taken it a step further in this very room that we're presenting from, a real hybrid of the two. And so we can now start to take content from the built world, such as this ph photography installation shown here at a retrospective of shops work in Santa Fe, and project it onto a digital plane that we can simultaneously inhabit. So this room that we're in now in our office is one that we conceived of last year to operate as a hub for technology, experimentation, and immersive design work. We call it Tranquility after the International Space Station module that houses the cupola, which provides 360 degree views of outer space. So the way that it works is six projectors operate in tandem to allow us to visualize anything in 360 degrees, whether that's rendered, rendered images or video, photography, design models, custom Unity and Unreal environments, or even just simple design pinups. We're also able to stream 360 degree video in and out of the space, which facilitates a hybrid in-office and remote work setup. And so with Tranquility at our disposal, we began to look at how we can integrate our various existing tools into our new space. And so as Jeff just mentioned, we work with many different visualization formats. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about how we've developed and integrated some of these into the architectural design process. So we were approached by a client to create visualization work for a New York-based office interior project at 335 Madison by the Grand Central Station. Um, the program of the project included tech incubator spaces, and we wanted to design in similar high-tech means. In addition to doing traditional still renderings, we created a real-time model in Unreal Engine that would allow us to fully capture the building um, and allow the client to experience it in ways that were only possible through an immersive experience. Um, we were able to translate our assets created for the still renderings into the real-time model and coordinate it with the design team to make sure that things were accurate. And in addition, the contractors eventually used that model as a tool for coordination, making sure that every detail looked correct and that the finished building really matched the original design vision. And so here are some of the renderings that we produced for the project. 
working both closely with the client and the interiors team to make sure all the details were there. Um, and the client was actually so eager to be involved in the process directly that they bought their own uh, headset for these design reviews. So that in the same fashion that um, we did on the architecture end, they could also review in a similar process. And this really allowed us to work super accurately. Um, so the real-time model became that reference that everybody could look to, um, resulting in this fully realized project as shown in these photos, which matched our vision one-to-one. -one. So while our previous project was a great success for us as a verification and construction tool, we wanted to bring a higher level of resolution to our next project, which is an institutional project here in New York as well. The final real-time deliverable in this case also had to be used to market the building itself. And so material and shading accuracy really became far more important. Like Madison, the project pr shown previously, this required a combination of both still renderings and a real-time, um, but through a much more porous process through which we can craft both simultaneously. We also really had to consider how the model would run in a VR headset as well to be used for animation and to extract skill stills. With access to tranquility, we also wanted to build something that could be used optimally in this space. Building for a multitude of dimensions and formats really changed how we were crafting each scene. We learned to optimize models and set up different levels of detail, allowing the content to be streamed efficiently regardless of the platform. We also learned to design in the rounds and use the Unreal Engine model to create placeholder renderings that which we can then be further refined in 3ds Max as shown for marketing imagery. We were also able to tailor the model to the tranquility space through the use of 360 cameras in the Unreal scene itself. And so this allowed us not only to stream video content in Tranquility, but also to work on a live model in the space. The level of spatial immersion offered through this method of working really did change how the designers and the clients perceive the whole design process itself. They're no longer required to you know, imagine a possible future, but can instead see it building and evolving in front of them. So real-time rendering and the work that our visualization team does is critical to understanding the designs and their visual and spatial impact. It really allows us to draw a lot of value out of our digital models. Another aspect of this overall process is how to bring the physical environment into our digital workflows. Architects work with 3D space and the importance of understanding the realities of that physical space in digital design really cannot be overstated. So I'm going to follow up with a brief sampling of how reality capture or 3D scanning has impacted our design and visual workflows, briefly touching on a few different topics from the obvious overlay for clash detection to asset capture for visualizations, virtual interactive scanned environments, exhibitions, and then what we see as the future with real-time scanning. So SHOT began 3D scanning for, I think, the, the same reason that most architecture offices probably do, which was to overlay our design models with real-world conditions for clash detection, understanding site constraints, allowing us to very precisely fit our design into existing conditions. What we quickly found was a huge amount of value in this, especially in projects where our work was designed to a much more precise tolerance than typical construction. In the case of this project, Nassau Coliseum, we found that the actual building conditions we were designing to designing the new facade for were very different from what was expected. But we were able to use this scan to adjust our parametric models to fit uh, and allow everything to be assembled very simply on site. We're also actively doing this on a project in Gaborone, Botswana, where we're coordinating detailed 3D model delivery from our office in New York using periodic scans in Botswana to allow these large prefabricated rain screen facade units to be able to fit exactly where they need to and, and, uh, and be accurately assembled to sub-millimeter tolerance. 
the ability to pull in 3D site data on an ongoing basis has become especially important over the past year and a half as access to construction sites and especially international construction sites has become much more restricted. This allows us to move forward remotely uh, and creates a single source of truth in the model that, uh, that describes the physical construction. And then moving on, the, the expertise that we developed using this kind of reality capture led us to ongoing work with the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum here in New York. The Intrepid is a retired aircraft carrier that was operational between World War II and the Vietnam War. And, and the scale of the ship is massive. Uh, if you're familiar with the Chrysler building, you can imagine it laid on its side and you'll get a roughly equivalent size to what the Intrepid is. The engineering of the ship is also really mind boggling and the spaces that you find throughout the ship are impossible to understand in just two dimensions. So working with curators and the facility staff, an ambitious project was launched to 3D scan the entirety of the ship and begin to use that data to make otherwise inaccessible spaces accessible to the public in new ways. This allowed virtual access to the scan itself, uh, but also new techniques for visualization, including VR and AR, in which visitors might see the ship as it was in different points in its long career, relive exciting moments, and really better understand the technology that made it all possible. So diving a bit deeper into that, here you can see some of the complexities of the layout and the interior spaces that make access incredibly difficult and some of the initial processing that we were able to do to rebuild and extract assets from the scan, even virtually reassembling equipment that was found in the spaces, allowing us to better understand how they were used in the operation of the ship itself. And so we began building the library of assets that are reusable in the digital reconstruction efforts and which we can assign metadata to, such as manufacturer of the equipment, commission dates, assembly, location, and, and whatever, whatever is relevant. So this creates a really invaluable spatial and visual database that can be folded into future exhibitions, can be used by the facilities maintenance staff and for education. And we've been able to use the same process on our own projects, uh, calling back to the project that Mingyi presented earlier in which very complex knitting machines were captured using photogrammetry to create the virtual assets for real-time rendering environments. In order to craft the scenes as efficiently and effectively as possible, it just doesn't always make sense to model every asset from scratch. So we've begun using reality capture to generate the objects that we need and quickly drop those into scenes. So from that scan to the finished scene here in which we're able to easily place the equipment move it around and understand how it will impact the space and how it's going to be viewed from multiple angles as people move around the building. So bringing the scans back into Unreal with the tool set that we've built up in projects like the real-time rendering examples we showed earlier opens up an entire world of possibilities, allowing us to collaborative, collaboratively view scan data in VR overlay with interactive models and understand the relationship between the design model and the, and the fabricated output in a very one-to-one, -one, human-centered way. We also use precise tools for clash detection and deviation analysis, but there's an aspect to seeing and interacting with something at scale that creates a much deeper understanding of the data. Finally, we're studying now how to take the traditionally very slow process of 3D scanning in which you, you perform a scan, you process the data, register it together, and output it into something that can be imported into design software and understand the, the workflow and the implications of making all of that real time. So whether that's capturing 3D data and reading it from different points of view, using it to create measurements uh, to quickly and accurately uh, uh, understand the dimensions of things in a remote setting, or even overlaying that data with new environments for dynamic test fits and operational planning. There's a huge amount of potential unleashed by making it up-to-date information available in real time and incorporating that into a model-based process. And lastly, there's something inherently beautiful in the data that you get from the 3D scans. And in a space like this, where you can be immersed in it and move through the point clouds, you're able to see it all in a new way and that allows you to think about your work in a new way, which I think brings a lot of value, even aside from the purely data-based approach to understanding the 3D scans.
and I mean, in a way, there's something very beautiful about bringing that data into a space like this and to no longer have that data confined to a screen or to a monitor, but in a space like this where we can really join the physical and the virtual. And with that, um, we would just like to th say thank you for your time mm -hmm. um, and thank you for allowing us to present to you tonight. Yes.